Next, from the Senate chamber, we hear part of the floor debate on fixing the state's rapidly growing Medicaid program. This program provides health care for the poor, but critics say the reform still has lax controls on spending and eligibility requirements. This debate runs about 20 minutes. President, uh, questions of the sponsor? She says she'll yield. Uh, Senator, just to follow up the uh, previous speaker's uh, comments, uh, where it was mentioned that we just want them to earn their exemption. Under this legislation, once a hospital exceeds that limit of earning that exemption, uh, does the uh, free care go away or will hospitals be required to exceed that exemption and continue to cover for uh, the rest of that uh, year? Senator Martinez. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. I, I just have to say that, you know, this, this bill is about making sure that all hospitals are providing care. Uh, and for those folks who are uninsured, uh, for them to go there and receive that care, this bill is about making sure that a application process is, uh, is followed, that, a, a, is the, that the hospital determines whether they can afford it, but more important, if they qualify for Medicaid, then they will go over to Medicaid. These are the, for the folks that are under the federal poverty uh, level. These are for the folks that are uninsured. And we have many of those thanks to the fact that we have lost many jobs you know, here. But I think the most important uh, thing that uh, Senator Schomburg said at the best, this is about making sure that these hospitals are earning their status for remaining uh, tax exempt. This is about making sure that, that charity care is at the forefront of the services they provide for the state. Senator Severson. Well, I guess that was my question. Um, we want them to earn their and make sure that they do their charity care, um, but what happens when they exceed that level or it becomes a hardship for that hospital? Uh, you had mentioned that um, it's important that we provide access to those who are under the poverty level, but th doesn't this provide coverage up to 200% of the poverty level? Senator Martinez. In the, in the urban area, 200% two, uh, in the rural areas, 125%. Senator Severson. If a person lives in a rural area or adjacent to an urban area and they um, go to a, a hospital that's in an urban area, uh, is the, are the guidelines based on where they live or the guidelines based on the hospital that they visit? Senator Martinez. It's based on their income. It's about how much are they making as a family, of, a single, a family of four, uh, you know, what percentage do they qualify under? It's about providing that service to them where, regardless of where they go. It's based on their income. Senator Severson. It was my understanding, though, is it covers up to 125 percent if you're in a rural area and 200 percent if you're in an urban area. If you live in a rural area and you visit a urban hospital, what guideline uh, is utilized for that individual? Is it the hospital's guideline or is it the individual where they live guideline? Senator Martinez. Hospital that they visit. Senator Severson. So in all those families that may be living in a rural area, that uh, they will be covered up to 200% than if they go to a, an urban hospital as opposed to their own hospital. So if you live in a uh, community that has a hospital that only covers up to 125% if they travel, to example, for, uh, to Rockford, which would be 20, 30 minutes away, they'll now be covered at 200% as opposed to if they stay in their own community, it would be 125%. Is that correct? Senator Martinez. The, the intent of the bill is to make sure that when you look at the poverty level in the urban areas, you know, it's at 200% in the rural 125. I would hope that if this is an emergency, they're going to go to the nearest hospital in their area. So I, I don't see you know, uh, a person living in a rural area who have to travel into an urban area 
you know, I think, you know, he will want to make sure he gets the services right there at the hospital that is closest to him. Senator Severson. Well, that would be true if it was for emergency care, but this policy and this new plan isn't for emergency care. This is for all health care. And so if a person that wants to have uh, uh, testing done or other procedures done, uh, you're saying, no, this is only for emergency care? Senator Martinez. Medically necessary care. Senator Severson. Can you define what medically necessary is? I... Senator Martinez. As defined in the legislation, it's defined as any inpatient or outpatient hospital service, including pharmaceuticals or supplies provided by a hospital to a patient cover under Title, uh, is that title 19 of the Federal Social Security Act for benef beneficiaries, the same clinical presentation as the uninsured patient. A medically necessary service does not include a non-medical service such as a social and vocation services or, ele or elective cosmetic surgery, which is plastic surgery, uh, corrective disfigurement, cosmetic injury, illness, or uh, any kind of defects, congenital defects. Senator Severson. That's what I thought. It says, it says any medical care. So that means if a person wanted to or needed to have um, a... MRI done or a CAT scan done or other procedures done. It's not just for emergency care. They'll be allowed to uh, commute to uh, a hospital that will give them 200% coverage even though they wouldn't qualify in their own community. They'll be able to travel, again, putting more undue burden on those hospitals that are sitting in an urban area that are surrounded by rural areas, for example, like Rockford, where you're going to have large numbers of populations from the area that are close enough to drive that are going to have their procedures all done at a, at a hospital that they can get the higher coverage. So we thought about amending this or looking at a way to tighten those restrictions up so you wouldn't have uh, magnet hospitals uh, out there uh, throughout Illinois. Senator Martinez. A doctor will have to determine right then and there if it's medically you know, necessary for them to be treated as a, an emergency, but more important, if they will be covered under this, this act. This, we wanted to make sure when we outlined it that the medically necessary is defined as what it is. So this is, they will determine if that is medically necessary or not. A doctor will determine that. Senator Severson. I'll wrap it up with this, but uh, and maybe we don't, uh, we don't fully understand. Medically necessary has nothing to do with emergency care. Medically necessary just means, as, as you just mentioned, that it's not cosmetic surgery. Uh, it is something that is medically necessary, not emergencies. So the concern with this legislation is that we have set such dramatic income guidelines uh, that those urban hospitals that are already struggling uh, that will now be serving, uh, like I said, in an example of Rockford, where over half the population of the city will now get free health care. Not only that, but all the rural areas around uh, Rockford will now know, because of published accounts, that they can now go to Rockford because they will be able to get much better coverage at a, I mean, get coverage at a higher income level than they would get in their own hospitals. So that's a concern. I think that's going to happen for hospitals. So I, uh, again, I'm disappointed with how broad this legislation is. I think the end result is going to be it's going to create significant hardship for families. There's going to be cost shifting to the, uh, the, the individuals who are trying to pay high insurance premiums, whose clearly their cost will go up. Uh, because hospitals can't uh, uh, afford uh, to handle this much added uh, free care without shifting it on to somebody. So thank you for your uh, uh, time on this matter. Terry Martin with Illinois Channel requests permission to videotape. Also Stephen Burke from WICS-TV 
would also request permission to shoot some video. Marianne Ahern from NBC Channel 5 also requests permission to videotape. Uh, there being no objection, leave is granted. Senator Brady, for what purpose do you rise? Will the sponsor yield, Madam President? She says she will. Senator, like, <clears throat> excuse me, like you, I, uh, I believe hospitals have a role to play in providing charity care for those who can't afford uh, to pay for the home health care. I serve on a, my hospital's local board, and we, we take that very seriously. Um, it's unfortunate, though, that uh, the hospital community has come to a position where in order to feel that they will be defended constitutionally and that they can continue to receive the property tax status that they feel threatened enough to support something like this, and I'm disappointed that that has come to this. But I do have a question for you. Um, most recently, the United States government implemented a rule that will force the fact of much of our medical network, the religious organizations who provide, who provide services, uh, to compromise their conscience and, in fact, force many of them to go out of business uh, if, if they're forced to live within the most recent ruling. In fact, several of those religious organizations have filed lawsuits protecting their constitutional rights. My concern is that, in addition to other things that this bill does, is there any way, shape, or form that this bill would require a medical provider in the state of Illinois to provide services that they don't provide uh, due to their religious or other conscious beliefs? Senator Martinez. Thank you, Senator Brady. And in Illinois, we have a law called the Health Care Rights of Conscious Act, which permits a hospital or physician to not participate in or provide service that violate their religious or ethical beliefs. So they are covered under this act. Senator Brady. So, so just to confirm, in no way, shape, or form does this bill uh, alter that protection. Uh, and the Attorney General could not require an institution that provides medical care uh, to provide a service, even though it might be deemed by some to be a necessary and needed service if that service uh, didn't comply with uh, their religious beliefs or their conscience. Senator Martinez. No. Oh. Assistance. Community organizations and patient advocates' voice will be heard in the recommendation and rules in the rule process. Senator Staines. Uh, and then to the bill. Um, so as uh, folks have noted um, on this bill, the, the state provides property tax exemption status to our hospitals. Um, this bill, along with the one we just passed, Senate Bill 2194, are going to provide clarity around what, and much needed clarity, I might say, with Supreme Court decisions that have been um, coming down in Illinois uh, to hospitals on what constitutes that charity care. I think many of the suggestions uh, from the opponents that have risen up to speak uh, around the logic uh, on perverse incentives is absurd. Um, I do not believe that in any way shape, this bill is going to create a disincentive for people to keep their own um, insurance or get coverage elsewhere. This bill does not provide coverage for any care uh, that's $300 or less. So that $40 issue that you could go to CVS for, you're not going to go to the hospital for. It's not covered under this bill. Um, it does not cover going to your general doctor for checkups or for any other regular preventative kind of care. It's only for medically necessary care in a hospital if you don't have coverage and can't afford it elsewhere. Many hospitals have already been applying the standards and they've not seen any perverse incentives getting created around these policies that already exist that they've been doing for years. Unfortunately, we do have outliers out there. Some hospitals are not providing the level of charity care they should be. This will rein in those outlier situations. I think it's very important to note that not a single person has filed an opposition to this bill. There was none. The hospital community supports this bill. Uh, it was passed in our other chamber, 112 to 0. Uh, I think this creation of an issue is false, and I would urge an I vote. Thank you. Senator Martinez, to close. Thank you, uh, Madam President. I just want to thank uh, everyone who has uh, rose today and debated this issue. I know it's an important issue. 
Uh, I've been at this personally myself for the past almost two years trying to make sure that we can get the best that we can out of our hospitals. They provide a critical service, no doubt, you know, but there's also a, a community outcry out there about some of the things that have not been done as far as parity across the state, making sure that hospitals, they have the, the wonderful, uh, I think that, I think many of us would love to get if having a property exemption, uh, they, because they provide a critical care. We wanna make sure they continue to provide that critical care. We don't want to see hospitals close. We want to make sure they continue to provide that critical care. I want to thank the hospital association who was uh, at the table all the time and, and took our input, the advocates that were there making sure that uh, we can tell the stories about people that went to hospitals looking for care and some of the things that happened. I think that this is a good bill. I think that you know we are bringing more clarity to what exactly it is that needs to be done in these hospitals. Many of them are already doing that. I just want to make sure that, that all hospitals are providing that care for everyone. Like I think Senator, uh, uh, my, my neighbor here said, I almost forgot your name, <laughs> Staines, I think, and Katowski. <laughs> uh, one of the things that she did say is this bill did pass the House, 112 to nothing. Uh, there's been a lot of work put into this. I think when it comes to the rulemaking, many of you that belong to JCAR will be part of that process, making sure that the right things are happening. Uh, this is part of the overall Medicaid. We have to make sure we protect so many folks that are out there that are uninsured, uh, and they are because of the unemployment that we have. I just want to make sure, we want to make sure that at the end of the day, it's about charity care, it's about providing services to our community, make sure that the hospitals are part of the community. And I ask for an I vote. The question is, shall the Senate concur in House Amendments 1 and 2 to Senate Bill 3261? All those in favor will vote aye, oppose nay. The voting is open. Have all voted who wish, have all voted who wish, have all voted who wish. Take the record. On that question, there are 34 voting aye, 23 voting nay. Having received the required constitutional majority, the Senate does concur in House Amendments 1 and 2 to Senate Bill 3261, and the bill is declared passed. You're watching the Illinois Channel an independent nonprofit corporation formed to provide gavel-to-gavel -gavel coverage of Illinois state government and other public affairs events taking place across Illinois. 